We're talking about hope. Now, hope is one of those words that can be used in many different ways. It's different to say, I hope that a dying friend receives miraculous healing, to, I hope I'm in the lottery tonight. See, and the reality actually is, uh, it's, it's our language here that's lacking. Hope, that first, is a hope, because it speaks about relationships. Hope is embodied in relationship. I don't hope that I may win the multi-million dollar jackpot this week. I wish I would, but I don't hope to, because it is not relational. And hope begins with a relationship with God. But it is about all our relationships, too. It applies to all the connections that we have with one another. So let's run through. How, how do we get to hope? Well, it starts with a basic connection that grows. And we see in the scriptures, we see if you go through from the Old Testament from the beginning, from Genesis chapter 2, and keep moving through to the coming, the advent of Jesus Christ, we see relationship changing. It's evolving. It's growing. Norm and Norma, 56 years. You two, I'm pretty sure, are not the same people that you married, are you? <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it hope starts with a building, growing relationship. And in that sense, it comes from a trust that's built from the past. See, so, and trust grows as your past grows. As you spend each day moving in relationship, trust can grow. Assuming that both parties in the relationship are trustworthy. Now, again, we see this in the scriptures. We see God journeying with God's children through each and every moment. And the promises stood. God promised that he would give the land, the promised land, to Abraham and Abraham's children, Isaac and Jacob. God did it. God did that by promising to free the children of Israel from slavery in the land of Egypt, which God did. God showed that by, by promising that the firstborn, when a plague would hit the land, that the firstborn of Israel would survive. God throughout built trustworthiness in our relationship. God showed that the promise was true. And as time would go on, God consistently said through the prophets, I am sending you your Savior. I am sending you the one who is going to rescue you, the one who is going to bring you into true life. You see, now sometimes hope has to be different. And so the children of Israel had to wait. But because they had seen in the past that God was true to God's promises, they waited. They waited for the coming king, for the Messiah, who would free all people. So hope starts in the past, but it is lived in the present. So the children of Israel cried out, even though they had been brought into the promised land, even though they, they occupied the land flowing with milk and honey, still there were troubles that beset them continually. And so they prayed for this Messiah King who would come and rescue them. That hope, based on their trust in God's promises, is lived in the moment. When you are hoping, for your friend to be healed. It is in the moment. But hope is a future event. You see, it comes from the past. It's lived in the moment as we hope. But it is based upon a future event. This is the essence of our relationships with God. And our relationships with each other. This is the basis for solid growth in a relationship. As we look to a future, to a coming time, 
Be that later tonight, tomorrow, a year from now, a decade from now, a lifetime. Hope leads us forward. The children of Israel finally received their hope on a night when the Messiah was born in a way that nobody expected the Messiah to come. Let's be honest. The children of Israel who sought and prayed for freedom from Rome in their own land were hoping for a king, a king in the line of David to ride into town into Jerusalem on a great white steed, branding a sword of justice and chasing the Romans out. It's interesting because sometimes what we hope for is what we get, but it's not what we expect. Because the king came, but not as a warrior in a steed, but instead as a vulnerable, helpless little child. Born in a place where no child should ever be. Hope came. The hope still stands because we are here now. We are here, as I said earlier, as broken people. No matter how good life is, each and every one of us is broken by something, or more specifically, things. Life is a joy-filled process, but it's also a painful one, starting from the time we're born. And so we hope, we hope for the day where the promise, where God's promise of the kingdom here and now, the kingdom that Jesus said is now in our midst and is to come. We hope for that, for the time of peace and of justice, where every person shall rest under their own fig tree and no one shall be afraid. We hope for that time of mercy and joy, overabundant joy, filling our lives. And we can, my friends, we can hope for this because God has promised it to us. And God has shown God's self to be trustworthy and true. The season of Advent is more than just getting ready for Christmas Day. You know, it's more than just just uh, you know uh, the trees and, uh, and the decorations and uh, you know, I heard a great thing. One door opens, an inspirational quote for you. One door opens, one door opens, another closes. One door opens and closes. Door opens and closes. Well, that's me ripping through an Advent chocolate calendar. <laughs> it's not about. <laughs> it's a. Sorry. No, that, was, that was goofy. <laughs>